Titanfall 2 has been garnering a lot of positive feedback lately, and for a good reason. The multiplayer in the game is excellent and absolutely worthy of all the praise. But it doesn't end just there. A lot of people and publications are commending the single player as well, some even likening it to games like Half-Life 2. And that's where I kind of lose them. The single player campaign was just painfully dull in almost every single aspect, and I cannot for the life of me see what is causing people to compare it to a game like Half-Life 2. So why is it that I feel this way? Well, I'll do my best to explain. Let's start off with the actual gameplay, which is probably the biggest drawback of the game. Titanfall 2's gameplay is fantastic. It is so much fun to wall run and knee slide and just do wacky dumb things, which is one of the reasons why the multiplayer is so great. That environment just relishes in that style of play. You're expected to go nuts and to pull off cool things and it just feels great. But what does this have to do with the single player, you might ask? Well, in the campaign you're almost punished for playing the game the way it was designed. Sure, there's a moment or two where you're allowed to let loose and go all out, but what usually ends up happening is you either die from getting bombarded with hit scan weapons, or as soon as you get rolling the encounter's over and you're back to wall running down another corridor. The game almost seems to go out of its way to punish you, or just outright not allow for the fast-paced, beautiful, frantic gameplay that Titanfall 2 is so good at. Now, it's not just the pilot gameplay that's a disappointment. The Titan gameplay in single player is just flat out awful. Titan combat in multiplayer slows the pace of the game down considerably, but it makes up for the slower paced combat with a more methodical and strategic approach. You have to weigh all of your choices and pick which one you think would best suit the situation at hand. It's actually kind of amazing how well these two play styles mesh in the multiplayer. But in the single player? Nope. Enjoy having this fast paced game slow down to a painful crawl just so you can fight brain dead AI who sit there and let you pound them over and over again with Tone's missiles. Real good stuff. Oh, and those bosses? Dead in 20 seconds. No joke, during my first playthrough I killed the AI chick whose name I can't even remember in about 20 seconds. This was on the second hardest difficulty. Real nail biting stuff. I also see people praising how the game picks up all these neat mechanics and incorporates them into the game for borderline like puzzle platformer stuff. What people often fail to mention though is that these mechanics spend 90% of their time in the game not being fully realized. You wade through these basic baby mode puzzles and then right at the end of the chapter you finally do something that's kind of cool only for the mechanic to then be taken away from you. Like the time switch or the laser thing. Both have maybe one or two really cool mechanical moments. The rest of the time you're just using them to open a door or something along those lines. Now, it's not just the gameplay that's disappointing in the single player, but also anything to do with the writing. Before I go on, I'll say that yes, BT was a great companion, and I actively enjoyed listening to his dialogue. But that's it. You've got a fantastic companion, and instead of pairing him with an interesting main character, we get Buff McStronghuge instead, who doesn't even have a shred of personality. That also goes for every other character you meet in the game. While they may not be as bland as Baldy McSpace Marine, they all die before they do anything. Hey, that robot chick I mentioned earlier was pretty neat. I wonder what she- oh, she's dead. And I'm never gonna hear anything else about her for the rest of the game. Awesome. And what about that drug dealer who you killed in the sewers? He, I think he was British? That's cool, right? And it's not just the characters. The entire world design of Titanfall 2 was just forgettable. Now, let's compare this to Half-Life 2, shall we? Since everyone else seems to be doing it. Now, I haven't played Half-Life 2 in probably over a year, maybe even more than that but I could easily list off numerous chapters, the setting they're in, what you do in those sections, and the overall design of each one. And again, I haven't played that game in at least a year, probably more. Titanfall 2 though? I mean, I beat that game a couple weeks back and I can tell you before getting footage for the video and just writing the script, I mean, there was the sewers, uh, the big facility thing that you somehow get to from the sewers, and then there's that high rise place and the part where you go back in time. Oh, and the ship thing. Now, I can't tell you the name of any of those places off the top of my head. That is poor design. I spent around 8 hours in this game and I cannot name anything other than the robot. This just screams out about how bland and forgettable everything having to do with the world was in this game. And if you're gonna compare it to Half-Life 2, then you best make sure that you have an interesting world. Overall, I'm just tired of seeing people praise the single player as if it is anything truly special. I mean, people were comparing it to Doom in Half-Life 2 for God's sake. Now, is it awful? No, there were enjoyable moments here and there, but really, stop hyping the single player up. The multiplayer alone is good enough to sell this game. 
And that's it. I just, I was really tired of seeing people hype this game up to unachievable standards and for it to actually just kind of be really mediocre, you know, maybe even a little bad in spots.